Battle Road here, and I'm at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. We're going to see greats from the way back era of the NFL. And uh, buckle up, you little buckaroos. You're about ready to take a ride on the toll road. And it looks like our 2023 nominees will include Rondé Barber, brother of Tiki, Don Coriel, great coach known for Air Coriel, Chuck Halley, Joe Klecko, another Jet, Daryl Revis, Revis Island there, Ken Riley, the Rattler, Cincinnati Bengal, great out of, he's a, call him a Rattler, he's out of Florida A&M Universe. Joe Thomas, Zach Thomas, and Marcus Way. September of 1920, group of owners met at a car showroom in Canton, Ohio, which sold vehicles like this Hupmobile. Okay, how many of these greats can we name? Jerry Rice, Reggie White, that's Lawrence Taylor, Anthony Munoz, Joe Montana, the sweetness, Walter Payton, I think that's Mean Joe Green. Who is that, Deacon Jones? We got Jim Brown, is that Megatron? Uh, Y.A. Tittle, I'm not sure. Check out this nose guard. I don't think the uh, divas we got playing today would go for that fashion statement. And I can't say that I really blame them. And yes, the first NFL game was played in Dayton, Ohio. I did do a video on that where the Triangles defeated the Columbus Panhandles. So the first NFL champions were the Akron Pros. And instead of a ring, they're given a watch fob. This one belonged to Carl Pike Johnson. Here's a program from the first Pro Bowl game. January 14th, 1951. Here's her centerpiece statue. The first true sports superstar in professional football, Jim Thorpe. He won a bunch of gold medals in the 1912 Olympics. This is real cool. This is the Letterman jacket worn by Jim Thorpe. He was a Native American. This is from the Carlisle Indians. In 1950, Jim Thorpe was voted to be the greatest athlete of the first half of the 20th century. The 1934 championship trophy one in the sneakers game where the Giants wore sneakers to get better traction and beat the Bears led by the legendary George Hallis. Here's what a season ticket book looked like in 1921 for the Detroit Tigers. Team went one Five and one that year. And a look at the legendary Johnny Hughes jersey. Okay, here's the S. Ray Hickok belt, which back in the 50s was given to the best professional athlete. Yeah, it looks like a predecessor to a wrestling belt. This is a game ball from the 1958 NFL Championship game, dubbed the greatest game ever. As 17 players from the Colts and Giants from this game made it to the Hall of Fame. Take a good look at this kicking boot. Look at the square toe right on there. Give you a little extra boot. The great and legendary Y.A. Tittle was so upset and frustrated about not being able to win championship that he took this helmet here and smashed it in half, Hulk style. The jersey that was made to be used by Jim Brown, but instead of playing that year, he became an actor. So this was a jersey made for him, but never used. This is the game ball used by George Blanda to kick an extra point and score his 2,000th career point. And here is the famous tiger-striped helmet worn by 
one of the greatest offensive tackles ever, Anthony Munoz. Hey, let's see which quarterback grip best fits my awesome throwing abilities. First, Jim Kelly. Not bad, pretty good grip. Warren Moon. And Troy Aiken. Ball felt, felt a little deflated. Never pass up an opportunity to look stupid. Oh yeah, great for prime time. Gail Sayers scored six touchdowns in one game, beating Al Bundy's five touchdown in one game record. Stack up against the shortest and tallest players of all time. Yikes. I could beat that one in basketball at least. Alright, let me listen to the radio inside the helmet. Green halfback left bump. Here's a 20 inch biceps of Irv Eatman, who coincidentally went to the same high school as me. Body strength. Look like they got about the same same hip size as myself. Hey, this is the Hall of Bust. Here they have a bust of every single person that's been enshrined into the Hall of Fame over the years. Such an unfortunate name. You think how some of these guys play football, you see them all the time on TV, and then you just never hear anything about them after they leave the game. Like, nothing. The Bears! Prime time. Now, all this guy did was catch touchdown passes. And kids that have never played football in their life are familiar with John Madden and his stretch of video games that went on about 30, 40 years and are still going. I wonder what shampoo he uses. And these are some costumes used by players during Super Bowl commercials. This is a display showing the evolution of the rushing record. Jim Brown held a record, but it was smashed through by sweetness. Walter Payton, well, held the record until his own record was surpassed by Emmett Smith. Who will be next on this list? Hmm. 
These are the actual puppets they used to display Chase Young and a couple other guys in the uh, Super Bowl commercial. This is actual football from the Hubbard Yard Dash. When Sam Hubbard of the Cincinnati Bengals scooped this ball up, reached 98 yards to secure a playoff victory. There's a collection of some unique artifacts. Bill Belichick's sweatshirt. Tom Landry's hat. Who could forget that fedora? And jerseys from some of the greatest Super Bowl quarterbacks of all time. Terry Bradshaw. Tom Brady. Joe Montana. And of course, Nick Foles. A good comparison of the Super Bowls over the years. Super Bowl one winners, the Green Bay Packers. And look at this diamond studded beauty. 20 years later, this was given to the Chicago Bears of the 1985 season. Look at this 40 diamond beauty. Now for the extreme. Super Bowl 55, Los Angeles Rams, Super Bowl ring. You can open up the top and there's a little bit of a stadium bowl inside of it. Everybody loves to blame the refs for every defeat their team has ever had. But could we really have a game without law and order that these zebras provide? And no museum's complete without a gift store. something you don't see every day hope you can hear me over the uh, highway traffic the power lines here are shaped like goal posts we got one on this side and we go across I-71 huh? you'll see the other one on the other side Seriously, where else are you going to have goalposts as electric lines? They thought of everything here. Everything's themed. All right, that's going to do it for the toll road here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Kane, Ohio. Right off of I-1. And uh, who knows? Who knows? where the toll road will lead to next.